Hi, my name is Ben Foss, and welcome to a video about telling your story in relation to dyslexia. I'm joined today by Mayu and his mother, Amber. Thanks a lot for joining us, guys. Um, and one of the things that we have found to be very important about dyslexia is the ability to tell your story in a brief and compelling way. Uh, I always go with a very brief outline that sounds like this. When uh, I was a kid, my mom read out loud to me. When I went to college, I used to fax my term papers home to her in New Hampshire and have her read them to me over the phone. And when I tell that story, it's got uh, three elements that make it a good story. First, it's true. It actually happened. Second, it is uh, something that has some sticky details, like me faxing the term paper home to New Hampshire. Those little details hold people quite well. And then third, I iterate the story and I practice it with the various people, improving it over time, so I make it better and better each time. Uh, earlier, we talked a little bit about some of your background as someone uh, who's dyslexic. Um, and uh, maybe we could talk a little bit about an experience you had where you didn't have accommodations and supports, and then you did. Um, do you, does anything come to mind in particular? Yeah, uh, public school before coming to Armstrong in math. Okay, and how did that ha how did, what happened? Oh uh, well, like um, managing the details, I wouldn't get accommodations for what I needed. Uh huh. And, stuff, yeah. and then what happened after you got uh, into a school that provided you with accommodations? Well, they gave me the proper types of notes I needed to stay on track. Okay. With visuals. And, okay. Yeah, help me succeed. So that's a good story from your perspective because it it shows that you can work well in school. Are there any stories that come to mind for you guys in terms of Mayu's upbringing when you were uh, not using accommodations and then you were? Any particular stories? Yeah, when I I was about third grade and I wanted to read Harry Potter and um, I couldn't, it wasn't, my mom read me the first book um, to kind of get me rolling and then we got the audio books and I flew through them and then I got to the scariest part of one of the books and, and I told her that I was levitating. <laughs> <laughs> and what happened then? And I told him he couldn't read anymore until he got to be older. So, so, so before you had to read the book aloud to him? Yes. And then after you had to stop him reading because he was beginning to levitate. To levitate. <laughs> okay. Uh, so uh, let's practice using that story in a, in a scenario. Um, so uh, why don't we try it this way? I'll be um, I'll be someone meeting uh, you for the first time, and uh, we'll say. Um, Maya is going to be in my class next year and we're going to have him do lots of reading assignments and we expect him to read with his eyes. Uh, is there anything else I should know? Um, Alamayo is a very good student. Uh -huh. He is curious uh -huh. and will be very interested in the books that you pick. Okay. But he will, not, he will not be able to read the books with his eyes. Oh, really? Yes. Um, he needs his books in audio form. Okay. And let me give you an example. Okay. When Alamayo was in third grade, he wanted to read Harry Potter. Uh -huh. And because he was so interested in the story, I was reading to him every night. So we read the first books that way. Okay. And then we got the audio books. Once he got the audio books, he was independent and could read it on his own mm -hmm. and kept reading until he got to the scary part. <laughs> and when he started telling me that he was levitating, <laughs> I had to tell him he had to stop reading. Okay. Oh, at least a year, wasn't it? Yeah. No, a few years. A few years. <laughs> he got older. A few years later. Okay. Well, that's a great story, and it encapsulates what it's like to have an accommodation and to be independent. Uh, and so I think you can use that story to tell your story about dyslexia. So the key elements to a good story are that it's true, that it um, is one that's got some sticky details. In this case, that uh, a young kid couldn't read Harry Potter, a book we've all heard of, and then when he read it on his own, he started to levitate. <laughs> And then finally, um, that it's one that you'll improve over time. And so you guys will experiment with that and you'll find out what, what parts work and what parts don't. So thank you very much for sharing your story and thank you for joining us.